I think that was probably the worst five minutes of my life. When you think someone is dead, there is nothing you can do. Everything is going through your head of like, I've just watched my friend die, what happens now? I was, first of all, I was really happy to see her uh, achieving these uh, great results. Cat Matthews has made history! What a moment for the Brit! When, when teammates performing on, on this kind of level and yeah, I was just, was just happy for her. Everything she achieved in the first half of the season was just amazing. Athletes. Cat Matthews from the Euro team across the line. It's, it's crazy. I had planned a month long training camp in the woodlands in Texas. Obviously, um, excited to see her in Bencona. Seven twenty-eight. <laughs> Do you know what that means? I we could have had two more minutes in bed. <laughs> I really thought she would be uh, uh, capable of um, competing for one championship title. She was building, and Texas was going really well, and her numbers were looking great, and swim numbers were better than ever. <laughs> Run numbers were better than ever, and bike power was better than ever. She would have been in with a real shot of winning that race. I thought she could win Kona. I thought if Rife didn't do something crazy and Lucy was kind of as Lucy always is in Kona, I thought she could, could really win that. And then she got hit by a car. The day started, I was a bit grumpy for some reason. I had set off slightly earlier to the guys who were also riding, starting this really nice bit of road that I'd ridden every day for a month. And I'd stopped at this like gas station to get an iced coffee because I was like desperate. I was slightly ahead of the guys at the time. Jack Schofield and Patrick were also just behind me. I was quite sleepy when I arrived and a little bit late. Kat had a shorter session with some intervals. She was uh, a little bit stressed on the day. Kat decided um, that she was, wasn't going to ride with us that day. She just wanted to, to do, the, do the session by herself. Kat was out there on, on her own. I remember rolling out and it was a bit of a strange dynamic. There was a lot of tension and everyone was kind of doing their own thing, a bit frustrated. Me and Patrick rolled out. And then Kat came flying past us. Overtooking us in aero position. I just heard this big bang and saw her like flying through the air. And yeah, in this moment, everything I kind of slowed down. Yeah, we knew that something really bad just <laughs> happened. Yeah, I can still remember that more than anything. 
that like crunching sound. Metal on metal crunching. That was the that was the noise and it was so loud. It was just bad, like real bad. There was this puddle of blood and it kept growing. And I was just actually praying that this blood puddle just stops growing. And this, uh, yeah, scared, sorry for the words, was scared the shit out of me. I thought she was dead. Got one of the cars to call 911. I think that was probably the worst five minutes of my life. Montgomery County 911. What is the location of your emergency? Yeah, I'm sure people are calling it in right now. Somebody got hit by on a, on a bicycle. Patrick was holding car. There was not much I can do. I was trying to stabilize her. I was on my knees and just begging her, please, please don't. When you think someone is dead, there is nothing you can do. It's a very helpless scenario. Ma'am, they just ran over a cyclist on Honia, Egypt Road. Okay, are they hurt? Yes, the first thing is on the, on the ground. And it's okay. Stopped. We're going to get some help. What cross street by Honey Egypt? You, you're kind of like, you know, it's, everything is going through your head of like, I've just watched my friend die. What happens now? She's crying in pain. We've got the EMS coming right now from the Honia fire station. She was like in this, in a, this shocking breathing, you know, she was slow. <laughs> Patrick called Mark, um, but was quite emotional, so couldn't really speak. The language barrier, Patrick's English is impeccable, but in that instance, you know, you f just can't function the same way. It just translated as like, bad, bad, come fast, come fast. And he couldn't say anything else. So I was like, is she dead? Like, can she walk? You know, what, what level are we talking? I spoke to Mark, told him what we knew at that moment. I, I could see that the blood come, came from behind her ear, that the ear was kind of ripped off for about, I don't know, 90%. If everything happened pretty quick then, fire engine 10 minutes, ambulance 20 minutes. Then the initial reports came out from the hospital that around but actually it was really quite bad again. There's broken skull, broken back. Um, so yeah, I was still on the sofa just waiting for information. And I'd already booked flights to fly straight away the next morning. I remember being in like the ED. I remember being on hospital bed. There was like someone very close to my face. I'd gone into the windscreen initially, and I think I'd sort of grazed it in a way that there's, there's still a lot of glass in my face. But I think this was like, my ear was, they had stitched my face back together and someone was sort of very close and checking it. But I, that's, that's where I was then sort of, okay, I'm in hospital. I fractured my um, occipital condyle, which is the base of the skull, like the th thick part that then sits on top of your spinal, like your neck. Then you then go to the thoracic spine. And I had compression fractures in T3 and T4. Um, and then it also a fracture in my sternum sort of like crushed me. And that's what they call it, like axle crushing. I am bed bound. They didn't know if I could walk. They were so worried about my neck and my spinal cord that I was very much like, you need to stay in bed and like stay still. So the difference between cycling along and being a week away from the world champs and then like, oh, you're worried that I might die or not walk again. I think 
that realization was like too much to handle and it was just I just felt grief like dis sort of despair and grief it wasn't until much later I think that I had the like wave of realization I think that was just the shock like the shock the grief the loss like I'd lost everything that I've been like I've been trying to get to this race for three years she was conscious of the cone conscious of what she'd lost because she's lost thousands of hours of training sacrifice and I think it was the acute stuff she'd lost like four weeks in Texas training in 40 degree heat is miserable and it's all for nothing gone and I just wanted to know what she looked like and how she was going to be and how upset she was going to be yeah it's pretty rough like walking through the hospital but by that point I'd had comms with her once you know she can move her feet and she can talk well you're already in a good place I remember him like coming into the room um, he'd like brought this like ridiculous cuddly toy from home. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but at the time it was equally ridiculous on a great scale. The first thing when I, I remember so distinctly walking through the door that she was like behind the curtain, so I like pulled the curtain back. She said like, I'm so sorry for how I look. And I just remember laughing and saying, this is the best I've seen you look all day. Like. I think by the end of the day, they had cleared my spinal cord as such to like, so I could move. Um, so Monday then I could walk, which was great. That was like a big, a big deal, obviously. <laughs> by Tuesday morning, I was fed up <laughs> and wanted to get, get out of there. My other sort of thought was that, well, we like, we got the flight to Hawaii on Wednesday morning. Um, they, yeah, they were happy to discharge on Tuesday. Yeah, I went to sleep and Mark packed my like life, my month of life into suitcases. And then we flew to Hawaii at like 5 a.m. or something. In my head, it was the easy option, like go five hour flight to Hawaii and have a great time in Hawaii. Some people ask me, like, isn't it really hard to be in Hawaii when the race is happening? And actually, it wasn't about being in Hawaii when the race was on. It was just the fact that I wasn't racing that was hard, and that would have been wherever I was in the world. I think it would have been way harder to go home and sit at home on the sofa and try and pretend that it wasn't happening. It gave me an extended period of time to deal with the situation. Accepting what had happened and that I wouldn't be racing was just a, a small interim of like, oh, I can't race, it's okay. I'm still in the sport, like this is, this is what I do. Give it up for Kat Matthews. Yeah. Hello. It made me realize that it's just one race. There are elements of it being hard not to race, but that's not about being here or being anywhere else. Um, it's about not being able to race full stop. And like, it's just a short time period. I, I reckon by, you know, spring when races happen again, I'll be fitter than I've ever been. I don't, in my head, give myself the excuse get smaller. So it's like, oh yeah, but you hit by a car and nearly died. She's a one of a kind. She's a real inspiration to a lot of people. I'm just excited to see what she can do. I, I almost uh, cannot believe that she is training so hard. It's, it's crazy. Time, time to like, get on with it.